Hi, my name is Ema Duverger. I am the program coordinator here at Stonewall National Museum and Archives. And today I'm really excited to share with you a publication that is very close to my heart that I just learned about during my time here. And that is Come Out. So this periodical was first published by the Gay Liberation Front, one of the first militant gay activist rights organization birthed by the Stonewall riots in June, 1969. And so before we get into the particulars of this publication, I'd like to talk about the history behind the term coming out of the closet. So the idea of the closet isn't really something, even though it's widely accepted now, it wasn't really used in you know, public language really until like the 1960s. So that was the first time the closet was referred to as this protective non-disclosure and was really unavailable until this time. And so, the closet once introduced was known to be a method of self-concealment and became a little charged. So we understand as the closet to be a dark and confining place and suffocating anyone that stays too long. And once gay liberationists began to embrace the term closet in their colloquial vernacular, the demand to come out of it was essential to the movement. And the other part of the term coming out refers to the social introduction of debutantes. And in the early, earlier 20th century referred to one self presentation to a crowd at a drag ball. So therefore coming out of the closet later meant a refusal to live in suffocating harmful conditions and coming out to the public at large as your most authentic self. So going back to come out from the gay liberation front, um, the name Gay Liberation Front, as noted by academic Henry Abelove, was a provocative allusion to the Algerian National Liberation Front and the Vietnamese National Liberation Front. Front. So essentially, the Gay Liberation Front is positioning itself in ideological and political opposition to the US in response to the state sanctioned violence enacted upon the queer community. So, and they're also standing in solidarity with growing anti colonialist and imperialist movements around the globe. So this idea of coming out, their manifesto is come out for freedom, come out now, power to the people, gay power to gay people. So really using the transformative energy from the Stonewall riots into a direct call for action to keep that momentum from the uprising going and serves as a call to action, a call to solidarity and a call to come out from the shadow of the oppressive constraints that governed those within American society and for us to all come out together and imagine a more equitable and radical world in which LGBTQ folks and their comrades can live freely and wonderfully. So in this inaugural issue, I found some very powerful quotes from contributors like Marty Steffen, who remarks, I didn't want to protest only in hiding spaces. So he wanted to come out in defiance of powerful corporations like Con Ed or occupy spaces like City Hall and droves and not just the queer spaces that they frequented, which got me thinking about our current form of protest today and the ways in which we try to show our opposition to oppressive movements here in the United States. He asks, why do we only come out in times of trouble, funerals, protests, et cetera? Why not come out in celebration of our identities, come out for events or of joyous occasions? Our solidarity hinges as much upon our being able to be together in times of anger and mourning, as well in times of victory and elation. So this idea that we're only called to come out when violent things happen or when we feel that our freedoms are being um, <sighs> oppressed, it is just very, the idea of coming out in solidarity to also celebrate our livelihood and our radiance as members of the queer community, I think really resonates deeply with me today, especially in considering the current movement for trans rights, for black, for black rights, and seeing this violent, the, how, how inundated we are from violent imagery um, of violence against queer and black folks and trans folks especially. And so in thinking about you know, our current methods of allyship and how we want to define ourselves as allies, we have to really ask ourselves, are we only coming out for these communities after you know, seeing these awful, awful images of violence um, perpetrated against these communities time and time again? Are we showing up for those who are also, are we showing up for them in moments of um, joy and celebration? And so the content of Come Out, 
um, was quite varied. So they advocated for communes and community living spaces with educational programs. They featured works of art, poetry, book reviews, and short story fiction, as well as notes and replies from everyday readers. Um, what I found particularly interesting was that there were necessary criticisms of the Gay Liberation Front. They were hypercritical of the sexism and patriarchy within the movement, and there were very real conversations happening within this publication about the GLF not being very inclusive to their women members. Um, another thing I found particularly interesting was that how it took note from other liberation movements, particularly the Black liberation movement in the 1960s and 70s, as a template to kind of conceptualize their own critiques of policing, imprisonment, capitalism, colonialism, and resistance. So oftentimes come out with feature interviews from Black revolutionaries and thinkers like James Baldwin and Huey Newton. Um, something new I learned um, in this particular publication was the mafia intimidation of the LGBTQ community. Um, I'm a bit younger, so when I think of the mafia, I often think of pop culture portrayals that tend to romanticize these organized crime families, so like the Sopranos and the Godfather. But in reading Come Out, I learned how prevalent mafia terrorization of the queer community in New York was. And there was a particular article that really resonated with me in which the women members of the GLF could recall when the mafia had intimidated them during their all women dance. So why come out? <clears throat> I chose come out because thinking about the nature of the current civil rights movement today and about Black Lives Matter and about our fight for you know, Black queer lives, Black disabled lives, Black trans lives, it only served to reaffirm the necessity of an intersectional approach in any liberation movement. When we want to dismantle the white patriarchal systems, we need a united front because the oppressive tendrils of the system run deep in our history and our culture. And so it really also reaffirmed to me that if you don't believe in black queer lives, black trans lives, black disabled lives, black fat lives, then you simply do not stand for Black Lives Matter. No other way to say that. Um, and one really important thing that I took away from my study of this particular publication was reflecting on violence as a legitimate form of protest. Um, Stonewall was a riot. The Captain, Compton cafeteria was a riot. <laughs> and people, we need to look at the history of the queer liberation movement and think about how violence was a necessary catalyst for the queer liberation movements today. Thank you.